The old winery restaurant, located in beautiful Niagara Lake, is the perfect place to savor great food and enjoy good times with friends and family. Here in this beautifully restored old winery building, you'll experience an invigorating and lively atmosphere where we serve up fresh Mediterranean cuisine, yes, traditionally prepared and inspired by the Tuscan countryside. When you walk into the old winery restaurant, one of the first things you'll notice is our wood-burning pizza oven. Out of this oven come our signature world-famous pizzas. We have a variety of unique toppings and our thin crust doughs are rolled out by hand on a daily basis. In 2009, we added the wine bar to the front of the building on the upper level. And it's available for corporate or private functions seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. We also house live entertainment in this room. We have two house bands. On Fridays, we feature the old winos, a country slash rock band. And on Saturdays, we feature a blues band, the Niagara Rhythm Section. The old winery is able to offer music and dinner packages featuring big name artists. One of my favorites over the past few years has been Buckwheat Zydeco from Louisiana. It's cultural music, roots music, it's called Zydeco music. Being here at the old winery is fabulous, man, it's fantastic. The food is good, the people are great, and uh, in other words, you're, you're, you're in the right place. <laughs> My name is Julia Cunningham with Coastal Realty Group and today I am sharing one of my passions, Cape Sandblast in Gulf County, Florida. The area has spectacular beaches in a community that is warm and inviting. Once you've arrived, you will never want to leave. Cape Sandblast is a pet-friendly 17-mile-long barrier peninsula curving around St. Joseph Bay offering playful surf and white sand beaches on the Gulf side and smooth shallow water on the Bay side. At the tip of the Cape is the St. Joseph Peninsula State Park, which was rated America's number one beach twice. The park has amazing sand dunes that stretch for miles along the shoreline. The Cape is known for its clear, sometimes blue, sometimes green water, low gentle surf, and luscious dunes. Dolphins and kayakers melt into the scenery. Many would not miss a scallop season in St. Joseph Bay. What is better than snorkeling all day for scallops than relaxing over a scallop quesadilla or the freshest ceviche you've ever tasted? Families who vacation in Gulf County choose this spot for both its beauty and its seclusion. Welcome to uh, Apalachicola Sponge Company here in downtown Apalachicola. My name is Jerry Garlick. I've been a sponge broker for uh, 20 years now. And we're just down the road from the, the original sponge exchange building, which was built in 1831 to house sponges, it's a, a warehouse. Uh, there's a picture that's familiar to many who come to the town, taken in 1895 with sponges all out in the street. Uh, it's a nice old picture. And so back in uh, the mid 1800s, the sponge industry was alive and well, as well as the cotton, the oysters, or the lumber that was commercially uh, harvested here. At about 1935, uh, there was a blight in the Gulf and that caused the sponge trade literally to stop. So during that time, the harvesting went further south. A lot of the Greeks that lived here in Apalachicola moved down to Tarpon Springs. That became a very popular place for the, the sponge divers. Well, along about 2007, we did a feasibility study up here and uh, some research on it and found that we could commercially harvest the sponges again. The main varieties of sponges we have here in the, in the Gulf of Mexico range from the vase sponge, and this type of sponge is good for uh, ornamental use. You could probably use it for uh, putting finger sponges in, 
which is another variety. We also have what's more practical, the uh, yellow sponge, which is uh, a good exfoliator. It's also good for cleaning. So what we do here is I buy them right from the boats. We process them and get them ready to put on the shelves. Now the divers don't wear the hard hats anymore and the big suits. With the advent of the regulator, uh, that's not necessary. It's wear the regulator, a weight belt, and carry a catch bag with us and walk the bottom. And so we don't harvest anything under five inches. We cut them off at the bottom, leave a couple inches there where the sponge will grow back. So it's a renewable resource.